Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Kors. I'm an analyst at ARK Invest, and I work on our autonomous technology and robotics team. I focus on the technologies of energy storage, robotics, and aerospace. Uh, but today, the big idea is electric vehicles, and I'm really excited to get started to talk about them. Uh, we just got numbers, final numbers for 2021, and they were higher than I think a lot of people expected. And so we'll get into why that may be the case and where we see the industry going. So electric vehicles are en route to sticker price parity with gas-powered cars. Uh, this is going to be a big deal because that's really the tipping point for demand. And currently, the two biggest uh, bottlenecks, really, for people purchasing an EV are, you know, the upfront price being too high and people have a lot of range anxiety. Uh, but looking at the technology, we're seeing that costs are coming down and we're seeing that ranges are going up and charging times are also decreasing. So based on Wright's law, and that's that battery cost decline curve that we're talking about, we're forecasting that there will be 40 million electric vehicles sold in 2026. That's up from 4.8 million electric vehicles sold in 2021. Uh, that comes out to about a 53% annual growth rate, which is very impressive. Uh, and really the biggest risk to this is whether or not traditional automakers can successfully transition from gas powered vehicles to autonomous electric vehicles. So where does it all start? It starts with Wright's law and the battery cost decline. So what is Wright's law? Wright's law is that for every cumulative doubling in production, you get a fixed percent cost decline. Uh, and that's what we're seeing here on the chart on the left. And that fixed percent cost decline for lithium ion batteries is 28%. So a 28% cost decline for every doubling, cumulative doubling. Uh, and why the battery? You know, there's a lot of parts that go into an electric vehicle. The reason we're choosing the battery is because it's the single largest cost component of the electric vehicle. So it typically makes up roughly 20 to 25% of the total cost of the vehicle. So by looking at the cost decline for that component, you can get a pretty good sense for the total cost to produce the vehicle. Uh, what we've really done this year and how we've extended our research relative to last year is by looking at lithium iron phosphate cells. And so on the chart on the left, you'll see that there's two lines there. The top line is looking at nickel cells uh, and the bottom line is looking at these lithium iron phosphate cells. And the difference here is that nickel cells are more energy dense, uh, but they're more expensive. And so what does more energy dense mean in an electric vehicle? It means that all else being the same, uh, you have more energy per unit of mass, so you should have a longer range. Uh, but with the lithium iron phosphate cell, uh, you get a much cheaper battery cost and it's at a lower production base. And that's where we look at the chart on the right and we see that uh, by using lithium iron phosphate, not only is it already cheaper, but it requires fewer vehicles to reach that cumulative doubling and get another cost decline uh, by 28%. And so what we think is going to happen is that you're going to have uh, a somewhat of a split in uh, automakers who have the efficiency such that they can use a lithium iron phosphate cell because they have the efficiency so they can use the less energy dense, cheaper cell and still reach an acceptable range. Uh, whereas you'll have people who are laggards in the industry who will still be using that more expensive cell to, to achieve the same level of range. And that could provide some interesting dynamics. And all of this is driving to that tipping point that we're talking about. And when electric vehicles could hit uh, that price parity with uh, gas powered cars. And we think that this is, could occur in 2023. But what you'll see here is that we're actually focusing on cost. And we'll get into that in a second. And the reason that this is so important is that we've already passed the point with total cost of ownership. Back in 2019, uh, we did modeling that showed that uh, it was already cheaper for like for like electric vehicle relative to a Toyota Camry. And you can see that with a number of fleet orders, whether it's taxi companies, uh, Uber drivers, 
uh, police departments who are shifting over to electric vehicles uh, because of that total, total cost of ownership. Uh, but then the, the price parity matters because this is the point when you'd go into a car dealership and the car dealer says, you know, do you want this electric a uh, vehicle that's $24,000, or do you want this gas-powered one? It's identical, except for it's gas-powered, and it's 25000 At that point, it's, uh, you know, we think it's a no-brainer where demand starts to tip over. Uh, but the reason that we're focusing on cost in this chart uh, is because the technology cost declines are very clear, but the dynamics for price uh, could be a little bit harder to predict, and we could see a few different things taking place. So already today, we're seeing that demand for electric vehicles is exceeding supply. And so you need competition potentially to drive down these costs or the price. Um, so people are competing and the consumer wins from that element. But what we're seeing is that traditional automakers uh, are pretty behind when it's coming to this transition. And there's talks of subsidies coming in. And so if a subsidy comes in and you have traditional automakers uh, who now are producing vehicles profitably because of that subsidy, but they're not really passing that subsidy on to the consumer. They're just raising the price of their own vehicles. And that could make it so that there's less competition and the prices don't come down, uh, but the costs are still coming down. And whoever's able to ride that cost decline curve could have extra normal margins in that interim. So that's why we're focusing on cost. And then the last thing I'll call out here is that most people think you know, price parity is this end point. The battery costs will come down and then they'll stay level with gas powered cars. That's not what happens. Uh, the cost decline should continue. And so you can see that in 2025, we think that it's gonna be, you know, 25 to 35% cheaper to produce an electric vehicle relative to the gas powered counterpart. So we were just talking about, you know, vehicle price and costs which is one barrier to entry for consumers. And the other is range anxiety. Uh, and what we see here is that Wright's law also models improvements in electric vehicle charging rates. And so the ability to charge an EV quickly is impacted not just by the vehicle and the power electronics there, but by the charging infrastructure. Uh, and what you can see is that, you know, since, you know, very early days in the auto industry, 1915, uh, all the way through last year, 2021, there's been pretty consistent improvement in charging rate. Uh, and we think that this is gonna continue through 2026. And you know, a lot of money is being invested in improving this metric because you know, we do see that it's a hang up for consumers, but it, you can imagine that after 2026 or in that time frame, once you reach a point where you know, it takes 10 minutes to charge your electric vehicle, uh, there's gonna be marginal return on investment for bringing that down to nine minutes um, or eight minutes. And we could see that the industry will optimize for other features, potentially autonomous driving, maybe more safety, uh, and then you know other entertainment and how to keep you occupied if it is autonomous. So what does the industry look like? Um, EV performance is improving. You just saw that with charging rates, uh, but it's charging across a number of metrics. And what's interesting though, is that you know it's not improving uniformly across uh, all automakers. And we can see that uh, the median performance of electric vehicles in 2021 is approaching Tesla's performance in 2018. Uh, so this is you know kind of where we get that sense of Tesla being three years ahead of the rest of the industry. And when you look at the y-axis here, uh, you can see the way that we're defining this index is looking at charging rate divided by vehicle cost. And that's not because charging rate is that important in and of itself, though you know people like cars that charge fast. It's because charging rate encapsulates the efficiency of the vehicle, the range of the vehicle, uh, and the power capabilities of the vehicle. And so uh, there's been this continued improvement and if we look to the right, we can see that you know, these trends should continue. Uh, and we think there will be a roughly eightfold increase in performance of electric vehicles uh, over the next five years. And what does this performance look like on this uh, index? You know, it comes back to you know, the way that we were just describing it. 
It could be faster charging. It could be a cheaper vehicle. Uh, and for some, it'll be uh, incredible performance, you know, super fast acceleration. Uh, and, you know, we believe that autonomous could take shape in that time frame. So with all of these improvements, we're seeing electric vehicles continue to take share from gas powered vehicles. Uh, and it's pretty remarkable in 2021, EV sales soared. They were up 112% year over year, while gas powered sales uh, were estimated to be up just 1.7% off of you know, very uh, depressed levels from COVID. And so just looking at this chart, I think it becomes fairly clear that uh, the incremental demand for vehicles is going towards electric. And it's interesting to think, you know, right now people are all talking about the uh, semiconductor chip shortage. And to think that, you know, there's this shortage, but by the time that's resolved, where is the demand? Is there true demand for gas powered vehicles back to where people are expecting? Or is it actually going to be electric? Uh, and then the need for these gas powered vehicles uh, may not be as strong as people expected. The other thing you'll notice here is that the growth rates are not what you'd expect, even, even from a disruptive technology. They're, they went from 69% in 2018 to 112% in 2021. And what we're seeing is that electric vehicles are breaking traditional S-curve dynamics. So in this chart on the left, you're seeing that uh, traditional S-curve, and you see even in the very early years with high growth rate, there's a declining year-over-year -year growth rate every year. So it goes 140, 138, 135. Uh, and with electric vehicle sales, they've gone from 60% in 2013, and now they're at 112% in 2021. And the reason for that is that we're seeing uh, layered S-curves on top of each other as new electric vehicles enter different price segments. And so it's coming at the high end, and it started that adoption curve. And then you got the cheaper vehicle, uh, more mid-range, and it started that adoption curve. Uh, and it's leading to the tremendous accelerating growth. So to, to sum it all up, you know, if traditional automakers can navigate the shift from gas-powered vehicles uh, to electric, we think that EV sales could increase eightfold from 4.8 million to 40 million during the next five years. That's a 53% compound annual growth rate and would be a $1.2 trillion uh, revenue opportunity in 2026. Uh, one of the last things I'll leave for you here is that an interesting dynamic that we're seeing is the emergence of neighborhood electric vehicles. And so these are vehicles that aren't designed to go on the highway. Uh, they're extraordinarily inexpensive uh, and they're ramping extremely quickly. And so in China, there's a mini EV that went from 5% share of the battery electric vehicle market to 9% uh, in the past year. And we think that these will continue to take off and could be a significant part of those 40 million units. So that's the electric vehicle section. I hope you enjoyed the research. Uh, as always, you can reach us on Twitter and check out more research at arc-invest.com.